What's up Airsofters? Welcome to Pack Mule Airsoft. Today we're going to be talking about kit. Uh, my kit in particular for Milsims. So first on the list is my headgear. I'm just going to start with my head, go to my belt, and then go finish up with my plate carrier. Uh, I'm going to give you some tips that I've learned uh, on several different things for the bigger Milsims. And yeah, so let's start with that. Most important thing is your iPro. These are some Emerson uh, supposed to be fogless, yeah, that anybody that's ever played Airsoft, something that says anti-fog or fogless, you're like, okay, whatever. Um, it does a fairly good job, but when you match it up with a helmet like this, the, um, the lenses are separated from the frame a little bit, so you get a good airflow, but the helmet itself actually stops the airflow. To solve that problem, I have an X-Fog. It's the best thing I ever purchased for Airsoft, I swear. Moving around, I've got my power bank for my GoPro and my X-Fog because they say you can get you can run all day on an X-Fog. I get about five to six hours on a good day when I'm not running it wide open. For Milsim specifically, my face mask. I will not go to another a Milsim without a face mask because I cannot tell you how many times you go around a corner or you're in a building or just something of that nature and you run up on like 10 people and they just blast you. I will, like I said, I will never go to another Milsim without one. Um, this is a Emerson fast helmet, fast bump helmet. Um, my power bank holder is just a M4 mag pouch, just nothing fancy. Um, I've got it bolted to the, to the helmet through the inside because there was no way to mount it. It's an Anchor 20,000 milliamp battery, so I can run this for roughly two days um, for an event when it's fully charged. It's kind of heavy though, but the GoPro 8, the Hero 8, and the Hero 9 are very, very heavy cameras, so you need the extra weight to balance that out. Another tip for the X-Fog. The hoses that come with the X-Fog are crap. Go to your Ace Hardware, go to your Home Depot, go to your Lowe's, and go to the refrigerator section get you some quarter-inch refrigerator hose. Um, replace it, and then if you have the opportunity, super glue your hoses to the inside of your, of your uh, goggles. If you don't, then it could turn and hit you in the eyes. The, the air will hit you in the eyes, and it won't actually stop the fog. I found that out the hard way at my... I think it was the last Milsim I went to. I don't remember which one it was. Um, thanks to COVID, it's been a while since I've been to a Milsim. But anyway, um, moving on. So that this is my helmet and my Ear Pro, which anybody that's ever played indoors, Ear Pro is very, very important. There are so many grenades that go off. There are so many things that happen that are really loud, flashbangs. P grenades, like all the things. Live fire, blank fire. This is a very expensive option. There are much cheaper options. This is the OpsCore Amps. Very, very good ear pro. I do have some things that I will change for the next Milsim, and that's putting some more foam right here on both sides. The wind, it's got foam in there to protect for the wind from the wind, but the there it's still too much of it gets through. So I'm gonna be putting some more foam on top to kind of muffle the wind a little bit more so that way it doesn't cut my volume down as much as it does great fit I would recommend these to anybody but it's a real this is a real steel headset this is not your airsoft version it's not a cheap thing I think this one sells for like a thousand dollars is what this headset just right here without the down lead or anything it's the connectorized version it's also got the um, NFMI um, adapter for hearing protection so you can put earplugs in and still be able to hear your audio. You're going to have to have a real steel amplified um, a real steel amplified and wired PTT for this. So keep that in mind. Um, extremely comfortable. Works really, really well. I can hear clearly. They can hear me clearly. If you don't have an amplified one, it sounds really quiet. If you've just got one that's wired to the NATO wire, it's got the NATO wiring on your PTT, and you don't have an amplified version, it just sounds really quiet. They can still hear you, 
but it's uh, very quiet compared to the other ones like the SkyTac or um, just the standard Beofang shoulder mic that you can get. So keep that in mind. Next is going to be my battle belt. It's probably one of the most important pieces of of uh, kit that I'm that I've got. Um, we'll start on the left side. The left side, obviously, I've got my banger clips where I keep my two grenades that I have quick access to. I keep four more in my backpack on my plate carrier, but I cannot reach them. I have to have somebody hand them to me. My three extra uh, pistol mag holes, uh, pistol mags. All of my mag pouches and my banger clips are all MC Kydex. Moving around to the side, you've got I've got my dump pouch specifically for these really heavy gas mags. These are the extended Burton mags for the M9 series because I have a Beretta, which is right here. I'll show you that in a second. I keep it really closed as tight as I can because when you're running around and you're like full sprinting, these heavy mags will bounce out of open, more open uh, dump pouches. This uh, utility pouch right here is used for my batteries and things I need quick access to, like batteries for my uh, ears, batteries for my weapon lights, my sights, my dead light, things like that. This is my dump pouch for my M4 mags and my uh, whenever I run my SMG, it's for my Evo mags. That's the reason it's so deep because I have to have a taller mag pouch. I mean, a taller dump pouch for all those mags, those SMG mags. My one M4 mag that goes on my belt, and the reason I have the M4 mag on my belt is so that way, if for whatever reason I take my plate carrier off, I need to lighten the load or whatever the situation is, I need my plate carrier off. I can run just my battle belt and still be able to be combat effective. I'll have one gun, one mag in the gun, plus an extra mag for who knows. My pistol mounts right here on a drop leg. The holster is by Blade Tech and 511. It's probably the best holster I've ever had as far as like drop legs because it's so rigid. It's got this plastic, um, I don't think it's plastic, I think it's actually polymer. Um, mount that goes on your leg keeps it from flopping back and forth. So one thing I hate about drop legs is that the, the holster itself actually flops. This one does not and it fits really really well. Um, for the airsoft spec pistols it clicks really well. It's not going to come out by accident. It's got a thumb drive right here. So you grab you grab the pistol, push down and it comes out. It's like super easy. Works great. Mounts good. Um, feels great. This is a Sector Arms um, pistol, but it's basically just an M9 pistol, nothing fancy. It's a really, really well-built pistol. Um, it's been through some damage. You can see paint's chipped off here where I've run into stuff. The uh, trigger guard's got some things. Got drug at the mill sim this, this past couple weekends ago over there at Iron Horse 3. It, it's taken some beating, but functions flawlessly. I've never had any troubles out of the pistol itself. The mags, M9 mags, if you're going to get an M9, they freaking suck. You can have to modify every one of them. These are the Burton mags. They're the best mags I've found so far. They still need to be worked on. When you come out of the box, they leak out of the bottom. They leak right around here. You have to pull this, um, take this screw out. It's just a Phillips head screw. Pull it out. Put Teflon tape around it. Put it back on. It's that simple. Next is going to be my plate carrier. Which is a little bit more in depth, which reason it's last. Like I said, I have my MC Kydex holsters, five of them right here on the front. Um, moving up a little bit, my admin pouch, it's where I keep maps, medical cards, dead rags. Flashlight goes right here. It's not in there right now, it's in my fob box out in my, um, with the rest of my kit. My dead rag that I pull. Easy dead rag to grab a hold of. Um, it's probably one of my better purchases. This is a NATO wired PTT that goes to my headset. That is by Code Red. I will link, the, like I said, I'll link everything in the description. All of my little patches, my field patch from Sector 9, our squad patch, uh, Black Skull Militia. You can find Black Skull Militia and Sector 9 both on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, the call signs, my TCA patch, 
I love my patches, so what can I say? My Nebo light. This guy right here is amazing for deadlights. Press and hold, three to five seconds, dead light comes on. Press it one time, goes off. If you need a regular light, you get your front light, your white top, your red solid, and then your red blink if you really need it. Um, probably the best investment I've ever put on, on a dead light. I was the only one in our squad that did not get overshot repeatedly because they couldn't see the dead light. At a distance, this thing makes all the difference. And it also, in the dark, lights up enough of an area that you're, they're going to see the bleed over of your dead light. On the back, this is my pack that I use for every event. I, this is my daily wear. I wear this thing at every Airsoft game. It's probably the best thing I ever purchased was this backpack. It's just a Molly, a Molly mounted backpack. Um, I don't remember the brand. It's been a while since I bought it. Like I said, I will link it in the description. It's another admin pouch that I use for my tourniquets. The American Milsim requires ace bandages. TCA, which is the next event we're going to, which is Bone Strike. Uh, Bone Strike 5 down in Vicksburg. We are going to be using regular tourniquets. The reason I am putting them here is so that my medic, whoever my medic will be, can always go to the same spot and grab my uh, medical stuff. Whether it's these ace bandages or a tourniquet, they can go to the same spot every time, grab it. They don't have to. They don't have to search pockets. I don't have to do none of the things. I just have to get a buddy to put the, put them back in here. In this pouch right here, it only gets used for some of my odds and ends. I don't really use it much for carrying things. Maybe a bottle of water. My top pouch here gets used for my extra bangers and a speed loader and some ammo. My big pouch that I use gets water bottles, ammunition, green gas, basically anything extra that I will need in the field, um, potentially batteries. Um, usually I keep my weapon batteries and whatnot on my battle belt, so that way I have easy access to those. My radio is a Beofang radio. Uh, it's a 8 watt, it's the UV5R 8 watt radio with a 40, no, this is a 20, 27 inch um, antenna. And the MC Cutex radio pouch holder. This is for the regular batteries. I don't have the extended batteries. Um, they have they have versions for the extended batteries. On this side is a easy access water bottle. It's a radio pouch, but I use it for water bottles, so that way I'd be like, hey, grab me that water bottle. Or if I need to, I can grab it myself. It's difficult to grab, but I can still grab it myself. This is my 500 milliwatt um, green laser that I use for signaling command and other squads. It is very, very powerful. You can see it from a long way away. You can identify buildings very, very easily. This is a um, Lancer Tactical, I do believe. This is a Lancer Tactical plate carrier. This is my, I'm sorry, it's a Condor plate carrier. I have been using this recently. This is my new plate carrier. And I've been very pleased with it. Don't necessarily like the fit around the sides as much. But other than that, I've been very pleased with this plate carrier. It holds up well. Um, I've been drugged by it several times at the last milsim because American milsims, you cannot, you can't help your buddy drag you. You, you. you have to just lay there. Do not, I'm a bigger fella. Do not get the full-size plates, the large plates to put in this thing. Um, it doesn't fit right. I found that at the hard way. I was thinking because I'm a bigger fella, you know, I get the full size plates. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Don't do that. You lose a lot of mobility um, around the edges. Your your arms are constricted more. So just as a pro tip, another thing on your slimness on the front. I used to run a double stack. It would be six mags right here, which is fine until you need to drop your gun for whatever reason. When you've got a sling and your gun is on a sling and you drop it, it sticks way the crap out here. And you lose a lot of flexibility because of that. Also, slinging your gun to the side is more difficult. Getting through tight spaces is more difficult. It's just the slimmer you are, the better when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, simply because there are so many things that there are so many things that you don't think about until your stomach gets in the way because you've got you know 
three inches of mag sticking out in front of you, plus your plates and everything else. Um, cable management is another thing. This is the only loose cable I have on my entire kit, and it goes to my headset. Um, I have in the past been going through the woods and have my radio cable get snatched out of my radio or it tear up my radio or my antenna get snatched or anything like that. It's important to keep your cable management. Keeping your kit in the same spot, like your, med your medical stuff, keeping it in the same spot. If your whole team, if you're running with a team or you're running as a solo, keeping it in the exact same spot makes a big difference for quick access to things. Because um, if you need to be revived in a hurry, if you don't have, if you don't know exactly where it's at and you're having to search for it, then the guy that's reviving you could get killed. And then you're both dead. Um, having access to your own water is important. Because when you get into a field or you're, you're hunkered down in a spot and you're thirsty, um, also you don't want to get dehydrated. It's very, very dangerous. One of my other buddies, uh, Joker Tactical, was talking about some ergonomics. Your battle ergonomics are the efficiency at which you can use your equipment to make sure things are not in the way. My rifle is on my left side. My left side is clean. My pistol is on my right side, making sure things are not in the way, directly in the way of my pistol. Whether it's on my battle belt or on my plate carrier or anything like that. If you found this any of this information useful, if you found any of the tips, something that you didn't know about, something you didn't think about, um, if you want some things that you want to see, something I did not cover, questions you have, um, yeah, give me a like, write a comment, subscribe. I would love to see you next time. Y'all have a great one.